Welcome to another episode of The Cool Garage. Once again, we're doing stuff that needs to get done before we can have fun with the cool stuff. You know, I mean, who expects your dryer to go out? You know, I mean, nobody plans for these things. It's disappointing because this is a Mealy gas dryer T80, T9820. We bought these about 10 years ago, maybe a little longer. Uh, when our Speed Queens went out that we had for like 20 years. In shopping for the new dryer, washer and dryer combo, um, we went to a store that's non-existent, and there was a guy working there that I've known from some networking, and let him know what we were looking for, and uh, get some lint off here. He, you know, showed us the Mealy's. Like, you know, I wanted to get something good, but if you ever priced out Mealy's, you know, they're like through the roof. I mean, freaking expensive. It's high-end stuff. Just go to, if you know a place like Apt Electronics or one of these places, you can just go check it out. However, you know, we were looking, and he kept pushing these. Well, turns out they came out with a new model. I think it was like a 9821. These were floor models. And they gave us for, they gave us the pair, believe it or not, for the price that, you know, we could have got, that we would have paid for a regular washer and dryer. Super, super deal. I mean, thousands off. Who could say no? All right, German engineer. They last forever. I get them home. And they did. It worked for a good decade or so. Then a dryer went out. So I did what I thought was the right thing. We called Mealy. Had a technician come over. They took it apart and looked at it. And they said, well, yeah, Mealy stopped making gas dryers. You know, they're they're not that good. We recommend you just, you know, get a, get a new unit. And that was it. It's like, what? So we left. I took it apart, I mean completely apart, gave it a great cleaning and everything, and it all it worked. Um, so, but recently, it stopped. I took it apart, trying to do some troubleshooting. Um, eventually, it went back, it started working again. But I tracked down the problem, what I believe is these little guys here. These are uh, thermal protection units. Um, they're basically a thermostatic switch, and they're resettable. They have a little reset button on there. So there's two of them located on the gas burners. Gas burner, one near the front, one near the back. And um, sometimes you can get like what's known as a flame back or something. A little fire comes back from the wrong side of the burner. Um, anyway, short answer is I was testing it, and one was working, and one wasn't. Oh, sneeze coming. Got to put you on pause. Okay, sneeze passed. Anyway, uh, eventually, it reset, even if I pushed reset, it, it didn't, but eventually it reset itself. So I figured, you know what? This seems to be the culprit. I'm going to replace both of them. Trying to find one, one of these things, and here's a close-up of, you know, if you can get any information off it, is like hen's teeth. They are like non-existent. I ended up getting these from the UK, uh, ordered a pair. Um, cost me about, I think it was $80, $90 delivered. It took a few weeks because it had to come from overseas. Um, beyond the pond, other side of the pond, all that stuff. And now they're here, and now I'm going to put these guys in. I'm not an appliance repair guy. However, you know, you need to do what you need to do. And trying to find videos on how to do some of this stuff is like next impossible. So this is a just a quick thing I'm putting together. First thing you have to do to take this thing apart is remove this. You remove this by coming over. You have... A little cap on each side. Uh, if you can't get it, first of all, don't cut your fingernails like so too short. All right, keep a little fingernail on. They do come in handy for some. Um, let me just put you on pause. I'll pop this cap is off. I pop I pop the other one off. Basically, if you can get your fingernail behind it, it pops right off. It um, it basically just looks like this. It's nothing. And you'll see that there's a, a torque screw in there. Actually. All the screws we're working on with are going to be Torx. It's a T20, all right? Find a nice T20 that doesn't have the end chewed off, you know, and you can use that. The secret with this is you, it's not removable. You basically, and you're probably better off doing it with a, uh, by hand. You give it a few turns uh, to, just to loosen it. Let's see, put this on there. Like that, that's it. And, um, We'll do the same for the other side. Get 
that in there. Basically, it's like a button. Now, of course, uh, let me just clean off the top of this clean machine. Top clean. If you're working on one of these, stop at Harbor Freight, pick up one of these little magnetic dishes to hold your screws. You know, they do make life a lot easier. So anyway, I'll just set this aside. I don't think I can do this with one hand and I don't have a tripod. I wish I could put this in my, use my teeth. Let me see if I can borrow somebody to, that could hold the camera for a minute. Now that you got these two sides off, I'm not mistaken. Take off this one side. You gotta take off this front panel. Okay, if you take off this one panel, screw that over here again. You need to pull this off. This is you carefully just lift it like this. It has a lip. Push down. There we go. And, uh, okay, this is just cover. Just throw it aside. Maybe throwing is the wrong word. All right. Now, take our 20 Torx. Pull out the control panel. Two screws. I guess you just lift. I don't know if it looks right up. It does have some snaps in there. There we go. All right, we're just gonna put this right here for now. The reason why we have to do that is there are a couple, two hidden screws here. So we gotta go boom, 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 take those off. So here we go. That's off. Now we can off and up out of the way. See, there are two more screws here that you have to take off for this front place. So we'll get this. Here. Now, you have one, two, three, four, five screws here to take out. These are easy to find because they have the little metal washer on the end. So let's get these out. You're ready to come off. Grab it carefully. We got that big door because we've got this little wire connector in here. I was just trying to point out the actual oh. cable. <laughs> okay, I thought maybe my pants were falling off. Get that cable off. Uh, and I tell you what, that door, that's a huge leverage arm. And the door is kind of heavy. Just close it. And put this aside. Now, to take off this piece, we find our tool we lost. There's three screws here. This one is easy, you're gonna be easy to remember. It has the plastic piece. It's the only piece that has plastic that goes to the top. This one and this guy. Now, there's just going to be three more screws in the back. You don't have to obviously go back. Do it. Oh, let's not forget the ones up on top. Yeah. Okay. 
reason why this is making that noise is I have the torque set very low on this, so I don't strip anything. Okay. There's three screws back here. For whatever reason, I'm missing one. So I have to take out two. Okay. This thing I'm doing really fast. It took me several hours the first time I did this. I'm just gonna pull this back. I'm going to set that aside back here. Now, I'm going to see if I can't rotate this a little bit for you. The two pieces in question are here and here. I don't know if you're able to see it. Let me go, I'm going to go grab a light. Pause for this is a flame sensor over each other, and here's one. The little red button, this is a reset, reset. The problem I'm having is, you could, and these are just, you could just pull this right off. Actually, probably pull it. Pull that off, pull this off, this is disconnected. If you take an ohmmeter and measure across here, it should be a closed circuit, AKA a short, zero resistance. Uh, same thing across this one. These two are actually in series, which means if either one, let me just put this here, if either one pops, it breaks the circuit. Okay. So, um, and again, pushing the button's supposed to reset. The problem is, this guy here wasn't resetting. This guy was closed, this guy was an open circuit, wasn't resetting. Uh, reset after time. So my thinking is, screw it, I'm gonna replace it. Uh, so, doing that these are not very difficult to take out it's just one screw so let me see see if I can get this uh, my Eastwood light to somewhat stay okay, I'm gonna put that screw here and stay there screws. See, nothing overly exciting about these, but boy, were these hard to find. If anybody's interested, this is an Eastwood rechargeable flashlight. They had a sale. I bought one for a big family. They got a light here. They got a light on top. Magnetic base, flexible body, and again, magnet on the back as well. As well as a hook. Ma yes, magnet and hook on the back. Now, remember I talked about nails? Bigger nails? Don't cut your nails too short. Especially if you like to do little mechanical things. You don't want them long and in the way. But, see, this is a little tight. Hang on one second. Okay, here's a brand new one. compared to the original. You can see they look pretty much identical. Well, they should be identical, it's a replacement part. The original one had a, a sticker or number there. This one seems to have, let me see which way is up, I think this way, some writing on here. Okay, so now let's stick this puppy in here. The light over here. Um, if you look here, top there's a little lift up there you're going to want to slide this little corner in there and then the screw head uh, holds this other side down in there so it should be as easy as coming in here like this and it lays down there screw goes in the hole which I'm gonna to have to get up because I can't see from down here Again, these are all T20s. You can do them all by hand. Um, just, you know, remember you torque it out. That's why I have the torque backed off on this. Okay, my other new one is here. 
Again, it's got the little tab cut out. It just needs to slide in there and you get the screw. So if I can just put this on there and do this. Sometimes I get lucky. there and easy peasy it doesn't matter which order these wires go on though you can probably see which way they go and they just press right on there I mean it is just a, a resistance same thing for this one now you will notice I have some tape on this wire yeah all right so these are back on this is back on anyway I, I taped this up from before uh, one I use, I always like to use Scotch 33 plus electrical tape. I've been using that since the 70s. Um, I find it awesome. It's a quality tape. I recommend it. It's not expensive. You might pay a buck more than something else. Uh, but you know, you, I've used some of the cheap tapes in the past. They don't have the give. They don't have the elasticity. Maybe they don't have the, the uh, adhesive. You know, so I found where I worked. You know, I was working in electronics. You know, this is what they use there, and this is what I've stuck with. Anyway, this is together. I'm going to go button up the sides. Buttoning up the sides is basically a mirror image of taking it apart. It's really easy peasy. Of course, you got to do it in the proper, you know, reverse order. Take the back or the side. You got to work on getting it in the bottom first, if I recall. And the back. Tap, getting it in. And once it's in, like it is, just a matter of putting in these little bolts. I'm going to go do the couple in the back real fast. You can tell I've got my torque set down. Um, there's no reason to make these crazy, stupid tight. You're just holding a panel on. It's not like you're lifting a dryer up by them. So the first time I did this, I can't tell you how much, how much time it took me to do it, to figure all this up, how to take it apart in the proper sequence and everything, what needs to come apart, what to look for, where. Now, it's like, I can almost do this with my eyes closed. I'm gonna move this, we'll just stick this over here. Now for the fun part, getting the front part. Here for a second. Plug this back in. This is our door, door lock or door open close mechanism. I'm not sure if this, I don't think this one really locks. The washer doesn't lock. And if you have really fat fingers, short, stubby, fat fingers, this is not easy. Alright, let's get this up on the rear. That's good. If we open this up, we should see our holes in here. Remember, these are the ones that have these little washers on there. Let's just get them get in there and start it a bit. Doing this, I should do it more like we're doing a car tire. I 
Again, I'm not, I'm not torqued too crazy. Okay, close the door. Remember, we've got two screws up on top. things way and I forgot some screws see how easy it is to do all right off with this again why because we forgot the screws over there so this is what happens when you think you know what you're doing and you're not going by a playbook make this easy. screw for that. So let's bring this out and take a look. Maybe I think this is the one. A little bigger, fatter screw. Screws to see. One, two. Ah, these are the ones that go there. Okay. And sometimes, you know, if you put them actually, the first time I did this, I was way more careful. These, see how these like don't even just are even doing it. They're like nothing. These little fatter ones with the washers on there would be the ones to use. See? Right screw makes a difference every time. Uh, okay, now we have this on. Yes, this, this point here goes in here. All right, let's get the door up here, rest it on here so we can connect this. What? It'd be easier if I did this. Trying something new here, I don't know. Sometimes you gotta try different ideas. Now they could have made another half inch on there. We do this about six, seven more times. Eventually, we might get it right.
the drawer. Alright. Well, I think all these are pretty. You put this out. This whole thing done. Notice there are like little hooks and stuff on here, holes in here. These guys here. I'll put this in place. Let's put this up here for a moment. Uh, let me see here. I need to. This one, let's get this one in. Okay, let's put this up. We got two screws hidden in here. Almost looking. Um, I can see you could take this off here, but you don't have it on. I'm not sure why they did that. Got a screw up in there, but all right. all right, this guy's in. This guy here. <laughs> okay. Snap. Snap there. That's in. This is the third time I've disassembled this. First time was to fix it. Second time was to disassemble it and find out I need to get those parts. And then this time to replace those. Now, this guy here, this basically, you gotta just get these under. So it's a matter of getting it down here, pushing it down, and having it snap into place, just like that. Buttons work. All right, now I'm going to get the top. Here's the top. No, I mean, here's what I have is when these little guys here, you tighten them in, they go in like that. That's what makes it tight. So basically it's this guy here catches those white tabs in the back. Okay, uh, like that. It's done. Almost looked like we knew what we were doing. Now it should work. I'm gonna have to plug it in. I'm gonna push it back in position. I'm gonna run it and just test it. It's late in the day. We got the dryer running. My wife finally got to do some drying in there. I'm just gonna put my hand here. And it is warm coming out, which means the dryer is heating, which is a good thing. So hopefully this thing is taken care of. Thanks again. 
I hope maybe you got a little something out of it. Enjoy, be safe.